Tonight is October the 3rd, 2023, and I've got something here. <clears throat> it's actually quite simple, and I have found very useful. I hope you will too. Uh, it's a diode demodulator. It's ultra simple. As you can see, there's a capacitor, a diode. This is a 1 in 34. The one that's in here is probably from the 1950s. Got a little choke right here and the resistor and the capacitor and that's really it here's here's the schematic of it right here there's a real legitimate schematic of it you can find these things all over the uh the internet <clears throat> rf comes in here from some kind of a sampler N not anything fancy but just maybe some kind of a sampler that you put in series with your uh, coaxial line and, and a tap off you know you get a little bit of rf it's detected you got to have a some sort of a. You don't have to have a uh, a choke right here. I used a one millihenry choke, or you can use a resistor about 10k. Choke works actually a little better. And then a capacitor right here, something like a 005 microfarad, just 4700 picofarads, uh, mega ohm resistor. And then this is the audio output. Now the output here is about uh, the level of uh, of uh, the audio that will drive. Uh, the aux input to an amplifier. It can drive headphones if they're really high impedance. I've got some 2000 ohm headphones and it does drive them but it's not loud enough, not in my opinion. And it's got the 1 in 34 up here. So it's just that simple. Now as it is right here, it will only demodulate and let you listen to the uh, to an AM transmission. I like AM, but with a couple of other components, you can demodulate your uh, single sideband. The reason I built this is because I wanted to actually hear with some fidelity what my um, what my transmission sounded like. See, I've got this thing. I mean, I think I've drawn it the same. I mean, it's physically built just like I've drawn it in here. Uh, input and output and <clears throat> I wanted to hear what uh, my transmission transmitted RF sounded like without having to put it into a receiver and turn the you know and play with the uh, RF gain and the volume and you know a receiver is extremely sensitive and uh, it's, it's so easy to overload it's, it's just really hard to listen to your own signal with a receiver, at least I found it so. You can short the input, you can go through enough, uh, you know, if you want to go to enough trouble, you can short the input, the RF input, and do a few things like that, and you can. But anyway, that's what this is. So, uh, let's move into the, oh, this is my kind of my new workshop here. It's in the basement. Uh, I still have the other one, anybody that watches my videos. Now, as I have another little workshop in, in the back, but uh, I've claimed this area down here in the basement. There used to be a gigantic heater right here, but anyway, all oh, I got moved out. And it's got turned into another room, so now I can uh, just work down here. So we're going to go over here. I'll show you some other little neat ones that I got. I got a uh, really nice little Collins 75A4. I'm still working on it here cleaning it up and it's not very need a little bit more lightage here don't we turn the light on turn the light on here so you can see it there it is isn't that a beauty okay well anyway this has got nothing to do with it but anyway what we're going to do uh there's a cable right here right here in the floor we're going to pick that cable up here in just a minute and we're going to put it into our demodulator. The other end of this cable, which is important, comes from uh, this device right here. This is a little coaxial dynamics tap off. This cable right there is, is that's the other end of the cable that I just showed you. And uh, the one on the top, I think, goes off to my SDR. But it doesn't take much to drive it. So you just need some kind of little uh, capacitive pickup. 
pick up a little bit of the transmitted RF. So we're going to take that. We're going to, uh, yeah, here is the, like I say, here's the other end. We're going to put it into this device. And then we're going to actually run it into this cute little thing right here. This little headphone amplifier because it gives us some, uh, some amplification. Uh, let it warm up here. And I drive these headphones with it. These are some pretty decent little headphones, 250 ohm headphones. And there's nothing special about two, them being 250 ohms. And what I'm going to do <laughs> is it's kind of crazy, but I've been experimenting. I'm going to actually put these headphones, so to speak, over over the over the camera, uh, like so that the uh, the microphones on the camera are located on the top on the left and right side. So I'm going to put these uh, headphones over this mic uh, the little microphones on the on the camera so you can hear what it sounds like. So let's listen to what the AM portion sounds like first. And then I'll show you how you can use the same thing, very same thing, with the addition of an oscillator, an RF generator, and you can demodulate your single sideband too. For a transmitter, we're going to be using this guy right here. This is my AM transmitter. I've shown, I've made a little bit of a video of it. it runs a single, a 3400Z, plate modulated with a pair of. 3400Z. It is a grounded grid amplifier. I drive the cathode and modulate the plate. Nothing totally weird about that. A little bit weird, but it, it's actually very common that uh, VHF and UHF frequencies, because the grounded grid amplifier is so stable, it doesn't need neutralization. They, it's mostly used like for FM and CW. Uh, AM is, you know, AM is not the most popular uh, mode of transportation transportation transmission uh, anymore but uh, a few of us still kind of like it okay let me get this thing hooked up and I'll show you what it sounds like pretty cool okay the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to look at the modulation this is the carrier it's uh, 600 watts of carrier and we'll start modulating it by talking into the microphone. This is what the modulation looks like. I don't know if that's bright enough or not, or if it needs to be a little bit brighter. Let's see which one is the, which one is the intensity. I think it's that one right there, yeah. It's easy to get it way too bright. So, uh, there you go. That's the way it looks. Now, there in the middle, or somebody that might notice this, I have what's called a keep alive voltage on it. So the, uh, no matter how hard I modulate it, the uh, carrier is never turned off. The, uh, the modulation never pinches the carrier all the way off. So that's what it looks like on AM. And we're going to listen to that here in just a second. Okay. Now let's turn it off. Let's turn the transmitter off. Turn the lights back on. And uh, I've shown this before, but I I think it's still kind of interesting uh, what my AM setup is over here. I use a very nice high-end, um, called a large diaphragm condenser mic right here. It's made by uh, Lewitt, L-E-W-I-T-T. -T. Does a great job. It goes into this thing right here. It's called phantom power. You have to have power to a condenser mic, and the output of it goes into this little speech amplifier. 12AX7, 6AL5, 12AU7, driving a pair of uh, vintage 6B4Gs. This uh, schematic, this is built to the uh, specs component correct for a, the old Collins KW1. And it drives this Macintosh MC40 amplifier right here. See, that's what that is. It's a little dark down there, I guess. But I think the camera actually does a better job than what I can see on the screen. The reason it drives that is because it takes about 26 watts. Comes over here and goes into the mo modulator on this cable right here, which runs a pair of 3-400Zs as the modulator. And then uh, behind it is the modulation transformer. 
that feeds uh, the modulated high voltage to this uh, 3400Z grounded grid amplifier that, that's being plate modulated. So that's what you're that's what you were seeing right there. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to put. <laughs> This is kind of tricky. I'm going to put these headphones, so to speak, over uh, the microphone here on the camera. I'm going to mount the camera back up here. I think I can do all this without uh, too much trouble. And then we'll... Uh... When I was talking a while ago, you probably could hear the modulation transformer talking. But uh, it doesn't get back into the microphone, fortunately. And now I'm going to see if I can put the uh, headphones over the microphone. Kind of like that right there. Let's see. It's kind of tricky. i to get it to stay there. No, no, I think that'll work right there. I think, I think you'll be able to hear it pretty good. Okay. And... I'm going to put a T, since I lost my T, darn, okay, well, forget the T, let me show you what I've done here, I've got to zoom out, I took it, uh, I took the, uh, co the uh, coax off and I put it into this, this, I'll show you here again in a minute, runs into that little headphone amplifier and then the output of the headphone amplifier, hope you're able to hear me, is, is going to be, uh, you're going to hear what it sounds like coming out of the headphones right now. Okay? But I, there's really no sense in, without that T, I can't believe I lost it. I wanted you to see it at the same time. Okay, well let's let's keep moving here. Okay. Transmitter is back on and this is what it sounds like. I think from what I hear, I'm gonna move completely away. I'm I'm at a distance from the uh, from the camera, so the only thing you're hearing in my voice now is what's coming out of the headphones. And I hope it's working. Well, I think it sounds great. That's what the quality of my audio sounds like on AM. And we're going to do it for a single sideband too, so uh, there's something in here for the single sideband people too. I'm going to, I still want to find that my T connector. I can't believe I misplaced it so quickly. Okay, let's stop it for a minute. Okay, we're going to do it again. Okay, I left the transmitter on. Okay, I'm going to move completely away from the microphone so that the only thing that you can hear is what's coming out of the headphones. And now you can see on the oscilloscope what you're hearing coming out of the demodulator. I just think it's a really good way to listen to what your own signal sounds like. I like to do that. So there it is. Okay, now we're gonna do it for single sideband. It's just a little bit more complicated. It only takes one more piece of equipment. And uh, we'll see how that sounds. It's kind of fun to, it's even more fun to do it with a single sideband sometimes. Okay, gotta stop it, reconfigure just a little bit. You can't understand that unless I talk right into the microphone. Now you can hear what it sounds like. Now that's about what my voice sounds like. And as we change the frequency here, then uh, we can go down to about, I think, about 75 or so. And, uh, you know, we get more and more and more. And then when we go up here, I think to about six. Uh, some experimenting I did. Then we, our uh, voice gets really high pitched. 
So, uh, whoops, nope, I'll change, oh my goodness. No, I don't want to change that, I want to change this one. I don't want to change the amplitude, I don't want to change the frequency. But anyway, I hope you see what I'm talking about. So I just hope you enjoyed the little bit of, uh, inject a little bit of RF into it and then uh, you, you can it's just like tuning your receiver so that makes sense so once again let's stop this and I'll talk directly to the microphone once again I found it actually a really good way to monitor what your signal sounds like Again, without having to deal with possibly shorting the input, you know, putting some sort of shorting connector or disconnecting the antenna, diddling with the RF gain of a receiver, it becomes kind of a nuisance because it's so easy to overload a, a receiver. So I hope this was worth something. Let's take the camera back off here. I gotta show you this little amplifier again. It does help to have this amplifier right here. This is a little headphone amplifier. I showed that before once in another. Uh, I think I got it from, uh, I'm not sure where I got it. I think I got it from Amazon. Sounds pretty good. It's got bass and treble. It's got four inputs. It's all line level input. So the output of this uh, detector, wherever this thing is down here, the output of this thing right here must be somewhere in the quarter volt, 250 millivolt to 500 millivolt level, depending on how much power. Now, I was running it at high power, and what I was running, what I was driving it with is this uh, Collins S-Line stuff, this uh, 32S1, that's, the, that's where the microphone was plugged into it. And in that case, I was using this... Uh, it's actually not a D104 element. It's got a condenser. Whoops! It's got a condenser mic inside it because you know these elements go bad after enough years. And uh, the output of this 32S1, well, it's actually controlled by this 75S3. Yeah. For people that are not familiar with the S-line stuff, the the bulb is not burned out in here. You can turn it on like that. That turns the VFO on. You cable these two things together with a couple of uh, uh, like RG58 jumper cables, and then the, the transmitter down here uses the uh, VFO from the receiver, so they uh, they operate in transceiver mode. And I was driving this amplifier right here with it, which is my uh, my homebrew 4CX1000. It puts out plenty of power, but it sounds just the same. It's, it's still got plenty of output. You don't have to be running a thousand watts to make this uh, this little detector work. So I just thought it was fun, and I'm really pleased at uh, how it sounds, how I can uh, actually monitor my AMR single sideband signal. I hope that helps. Hope you guys enjoy this crazy stuff. And for those that are not familiar with AM and single sideband, maybe uh, just the fact of knowing basically the difference in detecting AM and single sideband is injecting a, a carrier. And the carrier frequency is, is pretty much the same. It may be off of a kilohertz or so. I don't remember how much it's going to be off. This is 7.1159. And of course, I don't have digital readout, so it looks like my this looks like uh, I'm transmitting on uh, 7156. 7156. It's easy for the camera to get overloaded with that brightness. That's 7156, and this is 715591. Well, this is more accurate. Uh, <laughs> they're trying to read this analog scale over here. But anyway, they're, for all practical purposes, the same frequency. And, and for, your, for, your, for your oscillator over here, you can use pretty much anything you've got. You can use, you can use an analog with an analog dial and just tune it right in. So there you go. Thanks for watching, my friends. Stay safe.